Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on a classic wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All while fixing it up in the anticipation of bringing it here to Port Townsend, Washington um, for the uh, Port Townsend Wooden Boat Festival, which is an absolute mecca of all things wooden boat on the Pacific Coast. So, uh, we're here for a little adventure. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. And as you can see, this week started off with a bit of an adventure where Lady Zephyrus and I traveled down the coast to Portland, Oregon and met Finnegan. Hey. Hello, Finnegan, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> this charming little Icelandic shepherd, shepherd sheepdog. Sheepdog. Icelandic sheepdog is uh, Lady Zephyrus' new pup aboard uh, MV Zephyrus and he is an absolute handful, an absolute delight. How are you? How are you? How are you? Exactly. Otherwise, we'll also get a little work done on poem, but we'll, we'll figure out how that all goes. Of course, no trip to Port Townsend would be complete without stopping in to visit a very, very fine and famous shipwright gentleman. However, it's early Sunday morning and he's not around. Ah, I'll meet him again some other time. Well, hello and welcome back to the shed. Well, this week is going to be all about getting at least the forward half of the wheelhouse far enough along that I can start to build the dinette in here. And when I say dinette, what I really mean is the convertible dinette that also serves as a, an extra bed because then I can sleep in the wheelhouse while I'm continuing to work in the aft cabin. And let me tell you, uh, where I'm sleeping in the aft cabin is not very comfortable right now. So looking forward to that a lot. Uh, I'm going to work on filling some of the holes, uh, <laughs> some of them quite nasty, in the overheads here, in, in the beams and the, uh, and the house deck, and fill in all the rest of the little holes in here. And uh, I have a really neat <laughs> trick that was suggested to me by one of you. Uh, that way, that will help with that quite a bit. Let's get to work. Okay, doors for the forecastle. Well, I'd like to say I gave an awful lot of thought to these doors, but truthfully, I probably didn't really. It just is pretty obvious there'll be two doors that meet in the middle that open inwards. Now, they open inwards because they can't open outwards because there's a whole dinette thing here. There's a table ready coming to here and benches and all that, so that wouldn't work. Um, there's been some great suggestions uh, in the comments over the last comment over the last episode where maybe pocket doors where they slid in here or even a roll up door where it came up here and there's a bunch of reasons why those things wouldn't work and it's actually not that bad to have them open up like this. Now, the doors are basically just going to be panel doors so there'll be, um, if I think of one door, um, two uh, styles and two rails. Styles are the name of the uh, vertical frame members of a door and rails are the name of the horizontal frame members of a door. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward that way and the panel itself will be a piece of half inch ply. The rail and styles will be made out of one inch thick by two inch wide um, uh, members that are ripped for the plywood to fit into. Hey, let, me, let me draw you a little picture. Now traditionally a rail and style door would end up with a plowed out dado on the styles and a uh, tenon on the uh, rails where they fit into them. But I'm not going to do it that way because that's a lot of work. I'm going to simulate that by simply making a plowed out dado on both the rail and the style and inserting a spline. Good old spline. Now the other thing is to consider is where the two doors meet. If you just have a butt joint, either of these doors can swing without the other. But at the same time, it means either of these doors can swing without the other, which means you need two separate latches. But if you lock them together somehow, it does two things for you. One, you only need one latch. In other words, you close the first one and the second one holds that one in place. The other thing is, if you lock them together, these are very tall doors. If you lock them together, it'll resist warping and twisting a little bit. Now the two ways to lock it together would be with a half lap joint. This is showing you the joint not connecting and it would effectively end up looking like this when it's fully connected. Now that's pretty typical for a door like this. The only problem is it holds the door in one way, but not in the other. So it doesn't actually 
guarantee that the doors stay uh, locked together and uh, stay true. So I'm actually, we can reuse this illustration. I'm going to put a plow out a dado on both edges of both doors and insert a spline yet again that will loose fit into the other door. So when they close together, they'll actually lock together. That has a great benefit in that it keeps, make sure the doors never come out of alignment. It means that they lock with one lock, but what they also mean is it takes two hands to close them because you have to align them together as you close them. Anyway, we'll see if I made a huge mistake. It being after five, I'm going to switch to some quieter projects, and that is um, filling <clears throat> all the little holes uh, up here on the overheads, on the deck beams. And I'm going to just begin with by just cleaning them out just a little bit with this. Uh, there's a piece of metal in there. Anyway, um, with this uh, countersink, and uh, then I'll just follow up afterwards with a little bit of epoxy and filler and. We can sand this fair afterwards. Missed the hole, Peter. There we go. <laughs> anyway, this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to run around and enlarge all these holes. And, well, you know what I'm going to do after that. Using epoxy filler is way overkill for this. Um, a half decent wood filler would do, but this is what I have. That's about right. This little Craftsman 10 inch bandsaw, I bought to do a particular task that it didn't do a very good job of, but I would really love to be able to use it on the uh, door project because the top of the doors are curved. So I gave it a little clean up and a little tidy up and you know, for a tool that I thought was really cheaply made, it's actually reasonably nice. Uh, a little love in the adjustments here, uh, a little lubrication and uh, this thing may do a reasonable job. I, I, I say may. Let's start with some easy stuff to clean the blade up a little bit. I have no idea why this is so satisfying. Okay, let's get to the gist of why I want a bandsaw. And that is because at the top, I think I mentioned there is a curve. And uh, to achieve that curve, I'm just gonna cut it in the head of the, uh, the top of the door in advance of uh, building the door. And then that way, the bulk of my work will be done. Oh, that's just not fair. 
just not fair. Uh. Okay, when there's a will, there's a way. gonna beat me at my own game. Okay, some of you will recognize this cutoff uh, from the arch I put over um, the uh, folks of Bulkhead, and it's a very important template for many things to come. Well, including this door. So uh, if I just hit both these spring points, basically the top corners here, uh, I can put this very gentle uh, curve, it's a very, very gentle curve, into these two uh, rails. While I'm here, let's also do the top curve, which I won't cut until the doors are made. Now I'm just guessing um, as to the two side spring points um, because honestly, if I measure these, I don't think they're going to be really any more accurate. And uh, I'll certainly be doing some sanding to get these to fit perfectly when they're installed. Okay then. Okay, now you've all seen me do dozens and dozens of circular saw cuts on radiuses much sharper than this. However, with these two uh, exposed edges here, I didn't want to take a risk, especially it being an inside cut. Um, uh, in other words, when you're using a circular saw to make a curve, the uh, it is the outside that will always be cleaner than the inside. Anyway, enough on that for now. Frankly, this curve is so gentle, I might as well just sand it. But I've done gone to all this trouble. Let's let's give this a try. Well, the blade uh, was too loose apparently. Honestly, I think I just wanted to play with a new toy. <laughs> Good enough for me. Okay, so here are the splines that are going to replace the um, mortise and tenon. Uh, so it'll be a floating tenon type of thing. Anyway, I'm just going to ease the inside uh, end of it so that they will insert easily. You can see my beautiful Makita needs a new base plate. If you find your Makita or possibly other brand sanders spins like that um, ferociously, it's because the uh, the damper plate that's in here is damaged and you need a new one. Be very cautious because if this is not well affixed, it will come off like a flying circular saw. And the panels need a little bit of easing so that there'll be no catching on the hay in. Now before I do the glue up, I'm going to do something else uh, because I won't have access to this bench for a while. Um, this is a plank out of the wheelhouse. Some of you might remember sort of the baseboard and had cabinets. Anyway, it's certainly a mess, but it's one of the few pieces of the original um, wheelhouse that I believe is actually solid Honduran mahogany. Now, I say that only by its weight. Uh, it could have been Marente. Um, uh, but I believe it's heavy enough to be Honduran. In any event, it's solid wood and the patina is pretty close to what's going on in the wheelhouse. Now, <laughs> I did get some fantastic uh, recommendations from several people to simply cut plugs uh, out of an existing piece of scrap um, with the patina intact and drive them in uh, to, um, to fill the holes in the wheelhouse where I'm doing that. And that's an excellent idea. 
the only difficulty for me was that my plug cutters are tapered. In fact, they go in backwards so that this part wouldn't be saved. So I've gone out and I've bought a straight plug cutter. So we're going to recover a little bit of this wood. We're going to cut some plugs out of this and we're going to see how that works. That cut a little easy for Honduran and now that I have a piece in my hand this is very likely Marente but it'll make a good match. You've been neglected. Okay then so out with the lovely tapered uh, bung cutters uh, from Lee Valley and I'll replace it with a straight bung cutter. Um, this is also only a quarter of an inch so why make a bigger hole than necessary for this little project. To be fair, it mars the surface a fair amount. Um, it's not very sharp. So I'm not sure this is going to be as, as effective as I'd hoped. Yes, indeed. It, um, it's a rather savage cut. Uh, dear, 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 dear. Okay, I cut them really short. Let's see how this works. Okay, this one here is gonna be our little test candidate. So we're gonna drill a quarter inch hole right into it. As tidy as that wasn't. Dab a little glue because these are straight plugs and it'll help with sort of easing it. And see if I can get that to go in there. All right, drive it flush with a block. Wipe it off. Well, there's no doubt the bung itself is pretty good. Um, the failing was the hole. So I'm going to try um, to get some uh, Brad Point quarter inch drills, which might be the ticket. You know, there's something to be said for the Sapelli bung, um, mainly because it fits so tight. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. We're going to take this fixing the holes with bungs project a little more seriously. I've been to the hardware store in the city and I have procured uh, brad point bits which will cut a nice clean hole and some better bung cutters straight bung cutters so that the patina top of the bung can stay available for insertion i have a couple other tricks up my sleeve but let's get started and it all starts with drilling some new bungs our little resource of bungs here let's get going These are slightly better, but I won't say they're a very, very clean cut. <laughs> okay. okay, our lovely little quarter inch straight bungs. Okay, the next part of improving, let's say, that hole is a good clean cut. And I'm going to do that with a brad point bit. I hope you can see this. A brad point bit is basically a uh, drill bit with a basically a pointy uh, alignment pin in the middle and then it cuts around the outside, uh, cutting inwards, making a much cleaner cut. Uh, in the surrounding wood. The only problem is I'm drilling into an existing hole, which means it's going to float a little. So I think I can do better than that. I need a guide block. Block? Guide block. And there's one last critical element, some colored glue. You may remember my abundant supply of Sapelli dust. Well, let's get this to work. 
Okay, this is gonna set up really quick, so we gotta get to work. Okay, so we're gonna attack this one right here. So I'm gonna take the guide block, put it over my drill, then take the drill and place it over the hole. I'm sorry you can't see this. Slide the block back down, drill a nice straight hole. I'd like to think that was pretty clean, but goodness, even, hmm. Not very clean. Hmm. Well, let's carry on with a little of this and see how this goes. I got some in the hole, I got some on the bung. I won't wipe it all off just yet. Okay, we'll let that glue uh, harden up and we'll see what that looks like. All right then, time for the glue up. Now, I'm going to do this a little differently than your average glue up in that I'm going to actually start with a dry fit. And because I'm putting splines in at the corners, I'm actually not going to glue the panel into the rail and style. Now, the old model was to never glue the panel, uh, but that really applied to solid wood panels. With plywood, it's not that crucial. And on a heavy door, I would still do it for the strength of the bracing. But because these doors are so light, and sh narrow, um, we, we don't need really bracing out of the plywood. They're gonna be plenty strong as it is. And I happen to know that the plywood fits very, very snugly. So that simplifies a lot of things. It means my dry fit can actually just turn into my final glue up. Plus it means I'm never gonna worry about any blue, uh, glue uh, blowout along these edges, which is very hard to clean up. And with plywood, it's very dangerous because the veneer is very, very thin. So sanding it is seriously precarious. Okay, so let's just get this underway a little bit here. Okay, so that end is square. Uh, of course, I can't put the square on the inside up here because we already made it curved. But as long as the outside edges are square, we're in pretty good shape. Let's put some splines in. So now that I have a happy dry fit, I'm going to uh, let it spread just a bit and add some glue in these areas here, but not much. Really only just at the rail and style. Send it down below there. I really don't want too much squeeze out. All right, let me put this clamp back on. And some glue inside for the spline. Which I'll spread all around. And then of course, a little on the splines themselves. Most of this will get wiped off on the way in. Okay, so this has had plenty of time to set. Time to glue up our next one.
morning. Well, how do we do? You know, I'm not entirely confident. Um, it's very, very cold here. It's only a few degrees above freezing, and I'm not sure this glue has done what it needs to do. Um, I don't think it'll come apart. So I think I'm gonna hedge and actually put one screw in each corner. Um, maybe it was a mistake not to fully glue. I, I don't really know yet. I'm feeling good about it if I knew this glue was rock solid this morning and if I'd only brought them into the boat, that would have done it because they do heat the boat. Anyway, uh, I think probably just so I never worry about it again, I'm gonna put one screw in each corner and then it's done. So uh, let's see how taking it apart looks. It didn't blow apart, so that's good. And there we go. Actually, I feel really good about that. I'll put a bung in there, sand it, and it'll be part of the design. Um, I made them ever so slightly oversized uh, so that when the doors are finished I could just run them through the table saw and take just just a skiff off uh, to make sure that they're perfectly parallel all right let's set up for that turns out it's easier to do this over here all right Okay, well we have to cut off the ends of the splines that are sticking out and I want to do them uh, now and get it nice and square before final sanding. Now, a trick here. If I run the circular saw cutting just a skiff off here, I have very little uh, of the base plate on the surface so it's hard to keep the saw perfectly square. So it's awkward for me as a righty to cut in this direction, but it's worth it. So I'm just going to open the guard, sit the blade against the uh, end, uh, set my fence, and back off, and that'll just kiss it. Nice. Having sanded it off, I need to redraw the curve on the top of the door here. snowing in here. So I have a couple of little voids that I'm not really thrilled with um, and uh, this comes from being very careful not to get glue through to the end. Anyway, so I'm going to fill them with a little glue and sawdust but to make sure I don't have an accident I'm just going to tape right across here and uh, down into there and that way if I do have a little bit of a mess, it won't give me any trouble. All right, let's make up a little slurry. There we go. And like so many things, the finger is the perfect tool for this. Little accelerant. Notice there's one more data left and that's for the locking spline. You may remember that I mentioned that the two doors will be locked together uh, when they're closed with a uh, spline and uh, it's time to put that in. This I will glue the full uh, way. The trick is how much do I want to ease the edges of this so that they can mesh like a gear when, they, when the doors close. And I don't really know, having never done this before, so I'm going to put it in square and then ease it gently, uh, trying not to mar the corner of the door while I, uh, while I do test fits. All right, a little glue. So I'm taking my low angle block plane and uh, just starting to put just 
a very low chamfer on this, um, hoping that uh, that combined with a little sanding on the uh, on the dado on the other door will create just the right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, feels good. Feels good. And for the uh, dado side, just a little bit uh, of uh, chamfering it, or beveling it, I suppose. Dry fit and everything is perfect. It's that time, and you know what that is. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. I don't have the hinges yet, uh, but I'm just so eager to see them in place. I'll bring some hinges up next week and we'll get these mounted properly. <laughs> Gotta get the little spline to engage. show you because I haven't yet got the hinges on but I test and they when they swing open inwards they clear the next uh, deck beam just as I had intended so really really loving 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 this all right hardware next week <laughs> see you next week hello and welcome to the troubles of Jordy beer of the week and wow welcome to you ladies Zephyrus and Finnegan <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't quite know his name. I, I, I know he's mesmerized by the camera. Yeah. Well, Finnegan's been with us for almost a week now. Just yeah, yeah just about. And Is that uh, all? Yeah, I know exactly. That'd a little, be good. a little, a little rascal is he? Or he's been fine when he's with me because I, 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 I spoil him. him. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, it's been good. I think right now what he's really looking at yeah. is the lights of the legislature. Really, Lights beyond really the camera. Looks like he's looking exactly. at the camera, though. Exactly. He doesn't even want his little chew toy. No. Well, okay. I, 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 that works out Maybe perfectly. Maybe he wants to be a movie star. Maybe he does. <laughs> well, he's going to be if he has a few more sh uh, appearances on the show, because I'm sure people will love him. Now, here's the beer of the week. Will you look at this? <gasps> I just happened to see it in the liquor store. It's from Hoyn Brewery here in Victoria, and it's Finnegan's. Finnegan's! Fantastic, uh, with James Joyce on uh, on the on the label. Now it's an Irish stout, and uh, some of you will know that I tend to be critical of Irish stouts, but it was too good an opportunity to pass up on. Too bad it's not Icelandic stout. That would be quite something. Uh, tell us a little bit about Finnegan. Well, Finny is an Icelandic sheepdog, and uh, he's going to be 30 pounds, apparently, which is pretty small for pretty a little sheepdog. Yeah, and that works out pretty well for That's a boat. That's what I want, something I can grab under my arm. He's about 10 pounds right now. Right. 13 weeks old today. We went to our first puppy class today. And how'd that go? Like a little ball of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. I figured. Ripping around in circles. It was pretty good. Being a little barker sometimes. Well, cheers. <gasps> Finnegan beer. To Finnegan with Finnegan well, he beer. No, he, he cheers us. <laughs> cheers! Ooh. Yummy! It's a Yummy. it's a domestic stout. It's, in fact, it's Which one of the nice. better ones, better yeah. ones than than uh, than Ooh, we have sometimes. We like it does have that chocolate Ooh. kind of almost a porter, really. Mm. Not quite a stout, mm. but. This could be difficult. Very tasty, nonetheless. All right, let's get to it. some uh, paperwork, shall we? Last week's winner of Eight Travels with Jordan um, uh, T-shirt is Dan Messenger. Dan, get hold of me, and uh, we'll make sure you get your T-shirt. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Cheers to Dan. Cheers to Dan. Cheers to Dan. Um, 
So, so wonderful. Two new patrons came aboard in the last week. Uh, so I'd like to thank Don uh, Glassman and the Just One More. Uh, thank you ever so much to both of you. I really, really appreciate it. Cheers. 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 Two patrons. You know, that's really very drinkable. Um, a new pay, uh, supporter over PayPal. And um, I, I hope I can do this ju uh, justice. Uh, uh, Christian Torfesen. Christian Torfesen. Thank you ever so much. I'm very, very grateful. Cheers to you. Cheers. I'm sure you did that perfectly. <laughs> I hope I did. And that brings us to a bit of a segue for the Amazon wish list. Um, over the last little while, quite a few things have come in without uh, an indication of who sent it. And uh, I found out that Patrick Hotra uh, very kindly has sent many, many things, including recently the coolant tank, the delay module, uh, the windshield washer pump, and the temperature sensor. Um, Patrick has been very generous over the last little while. So thank you ever so much, Patrick. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All we need now is a word of the week. And I think it's pretty blatantly obvious, isn't it? The word of the week this week shall be... Yes. Pop! Pop, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were reading my mind. Pop, 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 pop. So uh, if you'd like to win a Travels with Jody t-shirt, simply use the word pop, pop in a comment down below, and I'll uh, pick at random over the next week's worth of comments. And if I picked you, you'll have won a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Cheers! Cheers to Pop! To Pop! Mm -hmm.